Hey everybody, Miss Laddie Daw, and today I am feeling a little under the weather, and I would rather not show my face on camera today, so instead I'm just going to show you the book as I read today's uh, chapter, which is day seven, and it is called God is Personal. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. Isaiah 43. Sorry, I apologize about the focus. Right after college, I moved to a cute little house on a cute little road about two miles from work. The house backed up to the Harpeth River, and as someone who loves the outdoors, I knew I had to get a canoe. I didn't have the money for a new canoe, but my mom was good friends with the guy who owned a local canoe shop. I asked her if she would talk to him about my buying a cheap used one, and then I prayed that somehow God would make it happen. Mom showed up the next week with the most perfect yellow canoe I'd ever seen. Now granted, it didn't have seats, had some small holes, and was pretty beat up, but I didn't care because it was yellow and adorable, and because the new shop because the new because the canoe shop couldn't use it anymore free god brought me a canoe and i was ecstatic after a couple of weeks of patching the holes and installing wooden seats it was ready to take out that summer i had the best time canoeing with friends and my dog to me it was the greatest canoe in the world one day after a ride down the river i got back to my house and was too tired to bring it up the very steep hill to the backyard I pulled it as high on the bank as I could, flipped it over, and left it overnight. After all, the bank was just behind my house. I wasn't worried about it getting stolen. The next day, I walked out back, and the canoe was nowhere to be found. I was devastated. The canoe I had prayed for, that God had given me, that I had worked on and made memories in, was gone. I was heartbroken. The next summer, I moved to a 40-acre farm a couple of miles away, and the same river surrounded that land on several sides. By this time, I had mourned the loss of my yellow god canoe and was ready to get another one. Slightly embarrassed, I asked my mom if she could talk to her friend again. I made it clear I was happy to pay for it. Mom called a few days later and said she was bringing one over. I was sitting on the porch as she turned down the driveway and I couldn't believe my eyes. Sticking out the back of her Suburban was the tip of a yellow canoe. I ran to the car. Sorry. Gotta turn the page here. And as soon as I saw it, tears started streaming down my face. It was the yellow canoe my yellow canoe it had the wooden seats i installed and the patches i made i was stunned god brought me back my canoe i obviously dying to know how that happened my mom said the wife of the canoe shop owner saw the canoe with their company logo on it propped up on someone's front porch realizing it had been stolen she took it back to their shop when my mom called months later about another canoe, they unknowingly gave it to her again. This is a great example of how personal God is. There's another beautiful example of this in the book of Mark. A woman who had bled for 12 years approaches Jesus in a large crowd for healing, but he doesn't see her. She came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought, if I just touch this, his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately, her bleeding stopped, and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. At once, Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, Who touched my clothes? You see the people crowding against you. His disciples answered, And yet you can ask who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Isn't it amazing that God cares about one woman in a crowd who touched his robe? He also cares about my yellow canoe and me and you. You're not just another face in the crowd to God. He knows you intimately, speaks to you uniquely, and loves you individually. Our God is personal. Reflection and Prayer When has God met you in a way that was extremely significant to you, but likely meaningless to someone else? 
what desire, need, or fear have you withheld from God because you don't think it's important enough to Him? Spend some time today in prayer talking to God as if He knows you intimately and loves you personally. Because, friend, He does. And that's going to end it for our chapter today. And uh, I hope that you spend some time in prayer today. And I hope that this story that I have just read has uh, triggered a memory with you or a feeling with you that you can relate to on many levels, friend. This is Miss Lottie Dahl saying ta-ta.